Ibrahim Sanidara is joining us on Zoom right now. Ibrahim Sanidara, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on, on Key Point. Good morning, Okanse. I'm, I'm speaking on my own behalf and um, to also make it clear that um, I take exception to some of the points made by uh, lawyer Kwebu and a few others um, to, to state that Anas does an honest job. And I'm going to use myself as a case that, um, let me make it a point that I'm also a journalist, I'm a trained journalist, I work at the highest level of world journalism and won awards for investigative journalism at the global stage. I worked for the BBC for several years. Now, investigative journalism is good for a nation. But what we have come to discover, particularly in this Anas case, is that far from what you guys, the ordinary people, will think that this guy is doing an honest job, in my case, in my case, I would say he was being dishonest, he was being criminal, and was far from the ethics of journalism, as he put it. I heard the, um, Mr. Kwebu saying that there should be a predicate to a case. In my case, for instance, what is the predicate for an ass to just creep up on me, take evidence, twist the evidence, put it in the public face just to deceive the public and make me look like a corrupt person? And I'll state these points. I'm a communications director of the Ghana Football Association. I have no role in player selection. I have no role in, um, in selecting players to the national team. I have no influence over the coaches of the national team. I have never been linked to any case. So what was the predicate for him to swoop on me? What was the predicate? I would want to ask Martin Pebu to answer this question for me. Now, in my case, they sent a guy. Normally, when you go to the Accra Sports Stadium, there are these guys. I mean, I'm very humble when I give gifts, and I don't say it openly. But there are these guys that you go to the stadium, you go to the VIP area, they beg for money from you. And one of those guys was the guy that was sent to me. And this guy comes to me that he wants, um, there's a player in Hearts of Oak called Aqua and that he wants the player to be called to the local Black Stars, not even the Black Stars. And mind you, I was not even the spokesman for the, for the local Black Stars then. First question I asked him, is that what you do at House of Oak? He was one of those errand boys for House of Oak. I didn't know him until, you know, things unfolded. Then he told me he's the one that, you know, when I come to the stadium, I gift money. And I do that a lot, not only at the stadium, but you know, across the places when people ask you for money. Now, um, this guy says, if he doesn't do it, this man, suppose um, agent of the player feeds him. So if he doesn't do it, he will lose his source of funding. I say, okay, come to the Accra Sports Stadium. We'll be training tomorrow in the afternoon. Come there in the open. This mm -hmm. guy meets me in a conversation not lasting three minutes. In a conversation not lasting three minutes, I stayed there. I told him, it is not possible. If anyone tells you players are called um, as a result of any influence, it is a lie. They will take your money, chop the money, and they won't do anything. Tell your player to work hard, do this, do that, do that. And that was the only conversation I had with them in three minutes. He, that guy, that aqua guy who was brought to set me up, with the Anas guy, there were two, and I was the only person at the Accra Sports Stadium when training was taking place. Then, when immediately I finished, they tried to give me an envelope. I said, no, it is not possible. And even went to wave my hand. Do you know what Anas did? He went ahead and said, Sanidara refused it, but subsequently sent his colleague to co collect the bribe. Now, any person with some, any level of fairness or honesty would ask, one, who is that colleague of Sanidara? 
Well, he said Why? that you, you directed that he should be given to the, an unidentified man in a... In a no, he said, he said uh, a colleague. Yes. That's what, what he said. He said a colleague. So who is that colleague? Who's that colleague of mine? Why didn't he record it? When my colleague came to him, why didn't he record the colleague um, saying that? And when I was saying, give it to my colleague or let my colleague come for it, why didn't he record it? So you see the dishonesty? So in that place, do you know what he did? He used captions and his own voice over. Is that journalism? That is crooked journalism. We don't need this sort of investigative journalism in Ghana. Indeed, we need investigative journalism, honest journalism. Are we not worried as a country that one journalist would wield so much power to the extent, if Kennedy, if what Kennedy Japan is saying is true, that this man, this Anas Armiyaw guy, was the one that interviews I, prospective IGPs? Are we not worried that an ordinary journalist will be involved in a lot of land cases against a lot of people? Are we not worried that one journalist, you have all of these controversies and we are willingly ready to hand over all of our powers to somebody who is unelected. And clearly, in my case, I speak for myself. And in my case, and in my case, he clearly told the lie as the Ethics Committee of the Ghana Football Association discovered. So I asked those questions. Who was that colleague of mine that I sent? Did you hear me saying my colleague of mine should come there? He should point all of these things out. So that goes to the heart of the thing. He is not honest. He, he, okay. he tampers with evidence. He's not being honest. In my case, he was not honest. Okay. He was not truthful. So we're, we're, as we are here, we cannot, I mean, you make reference to what Kenny Japon said about what Anas is involved in land cases and IGP selection. We cannot also confirm that that's Kenny Japon's words against Anas. We, we don't have any independent checks to confirm or deny that particular claim. But, in fact, as you stated in the number 12, and as they state that you indeed did not take the bribe, I remember you, you actually filed a suit against Anas, another defamation suit. I think some 20 million CDs you were demanding. Uh, yes. Dominic Rayini was, was your lawyer at the time, I remember that. Yes. How did yes. that case end? There were two cases I filed. One, um, um, one asking the court um, to, to declare that um, he illegally swooped upon me. Two, a defamation case. Now, the, the first one was determined. The judge, the judge declared that Anas was in his will to swoop up or, or to sneak on me. Now, and in that same ruling, that judge... Um, said that um, we need to find the identity of that person, that other person. I was so surprised. I was so surprised. And so, like, they, they were saying, the predicate. Where was the predicate? Am I a selector of player into the national teams? There was no predicate. That defamation case, uh, court case has not gone anywhere. I, I weighed it against two things. One, the ethics committee of the Ghana Football Association, and two, um, going all the way and spending a lot of money. I, I've never been involved in, I've never been in my life, any police station for any reason. I've never been there. I've never been to court. I didn't know it was that expensive to, to run a defamation course. But that case is still open, and the options are still open. If I'm able to gather enough money, I will pursue it to the legal yield. And I, I can say it as a matter of fact, in my case, if you guys would, would be grateful enough to have the tapes and ask, <clears throat> why, why, why is it that he said, my colleague, I sent somebody. Where in my statement did I send my colleague? Where in my state, where was that colleague of mine? Where was my co that colleague of mine coming there? Why didn't he have the recording? And he would rather use voiceovers and, um, and captions and subtitles to make that point when there is no evidence. If this has happened to me, perhaps it would have happened to hundreds of people who don't even know journalism, who don't know the tricks that perhaps he used. 
I have been, I have been violated in the most withering terms. I've been violated by this guy. And if the court has found him to be this, it has to be this. Not only that, but we have to care for journalism in Ghana. Care for journalism in Ghana. Nobody must be able to soup up upon anybody. In India, for instance, there's a law about um, investigative journalism, how it is conducted. Perhaps it, it should not be uncontrolled. In Ghana, it is uncontrolled. Nobody can pick up any evidence on you, anyhow, and use it against you. You must remember the case of the news of the world in the United Kingdom. Why the news of the world newspaper was collapsed is because of some of the activities of journalists like Anas, who take evidence in, in, um, in, in one way, in an unorthodox way, and present it in an unorthodox way. That should be our concern. As good citizens of the country, we should be happy that, you know, um, investigative journalism can be used to help society to root out corruption in society and all. But when journalism itself becomes dishonest, we must be able to call it out. And the Ghana Journalism Association must have a platform where okay. there can be a controlled, you know, there can be a controlled way people carry, carry out investigative journalism. It cannot be done like the way it was done in my case. It is criminal. Ibrahim Sanidara, so uh, I didn't get the conclusion of that defamation case. What? What? It's, 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 the it's, defamation it's case, yes, it's still hanging. It's I've still not hanging. pursued it. You haven't yes. pursued it? No, is that I've, the I've not pursued it further. Yeah. Okay, you haven't yes. pursued it further. Yeah, I've been pursued it, but the, what is no, most important for me... No, okay. no, I didn't lose the defamation case. No, no, that, 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 case, that case hasn't that been concluded true. on us yet. I said there were two I cases. took the two cases, two cases. Yes. One, to determine whether it was illegal for an ass to swoop up upon me and the no guys. The, and the no one. guys. Yes. That is one, and, and the and defamation case is separate. Okay, so that defamation case has not been... Ruled on as yet. It has not, yes, it has not been forwarded because I have to pay some fees that I can't afford or I, I don't even think it is wise for me to put it. Particularly when the, the ethics committee of the Ghana Football Association right. has looked at all of these evidence and decided that that claim of an ass was false and threw it out. Okay, so we, we, yes, lawyer, 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 Mm -hmm. Is that not it? There's, yes, there's no judgment on the defamation suit, lawyer. Can I be clear so, to you? Can I be so, clear no, to there, you? There, there, there so which one is the judgment? judgment on the first, there, there was cases. a first one, case. There was a of, first case to determine mm -hmm. whether it was legal or Ill illegal for an ass to soup up upon me in this way. And even in that judgment, the lawyer mm -hmm. said they have to identify that person in, uh, in the tape. That was the aqua guy. Why didn't the judge determine that? When yeah. I had stated... Uh, so that's the one you lost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Yes, you... that was the one I lost. That was whether it was legal or illegal. The defamation case has not been determined. Okay. Okay. That is how Samid Ako, that guy oh, that oh, came right. before me, <laughs> is deceiving the public. No, no, and it is the way, the, the way they operate. To lie and deceive. Uh, I see. So the, that's, I just wanted to establish those two cases mm -hmm. and also the life of those two cases. So one has ended and the other, according to Sanidara, is, is, not, is inconclusive because he cannot pay uh, the, the legal fees or he can't find money to pay the fees um, to, to conclude the case. Ibrahim Sanidara, thank you. Uh, thank you very much.